All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Hawk and Smolden podcast. We are on the fourth episode, and we're ready to get it rolling here. Smolden, you there? I am here. I am here. All right, man, what a race week we had. Uh, we missed out on some Monday night action due to being out of town, but we are kicked things off with what happened on Tuesday night. Uh, that's when we took all the dirt and we went over to Lima Land Motorsports Park. That was on uh, February 22nd. And we're going to start off with the 360s here, and uh, we'll get right into heat number one, where Coy dominated that heat. You finished in the second spot, Anthony Monroe in the three, and Chris Beavers in the four. What do you think of that heat race there? Yeah, it was a good one. Uh, it was nice to uh, get back to racing this week. Obviously, no races on Monday, so going jumping right into dirt, which is my forte usually. So it was nice to get out there. Coy had a hell of a car, though, right out in that heat, right off the rip. So he was quick, and uh, I was glad just salvaged a second place. and went on to uh, the future from there absolutely seeing coy take that heat race there and uh, we go over to heat number two where jamie kephart finds a win uh in heat number two valentine back there in that two spot cole howard in a three and rick kelly in a four any surprise in that heat race no definitely not jamie is starting to you know he always says that uh you know the 360s aren't his his gig but he's definitely starting to pick up his game on those and it helps being on uh you know a couple of his teammates are obviously pretty quick so Helps. Uh, Eli was quick and uh, Cole. It was, it was good to see him in a win car. It's odd to see him uh, finish in the top three like that, but it was nice to see him. Absolutely. And then we reach ourselves right into the feature here, and we had a good one here. These guys ran 25 laps, and uh, boy ended up bringing home the victory. Derek Sellers in the two, and yourself finding your uh, way into the three spot there. Um, I take a look down the board here, and no huge surprises here, but one guy stands out to me, and that's Chris Beavers in that five spot. Just didn't seem to uh, have the sprint car in this one here, Smolden. No, that's a tough track, too, right? I mean, I even struggle myself here. Um, it's super tight. It's easy to push out of exit, and obviously that you know that's where you get in the wall, um, and you lose all kinds of speed. You do that a couple laps in a row, and it's, it's game over for you, so... Um, to be completely honest, it was one heck of a clean race. We had a couple guys with some issues, but overall, at least your top six guys, uh, not too many issues. So it was a, it was a good race, though. It was fun. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of incident points, we look over here, and uh, I, I don't even see somebody in double digits. The highest we had is Anthony Monroe with eight, and we had uh, you know three guys uh, with zero incident points. Cole, Coy being the race winner had zero. Derek Sellers had zero, and uh, Jamie Kephart also finishing with the goose egg. So big shout-out to those guys, and congratulations again to Coy uh, winning that feature in the 360s uh, at Lima Land. Now we're going to head on over to the Big Block Modifieds also at Lima Land. That's the second race on Tuesday night, and we'll jump right over into the heat races. That's where Derek Sellers uh, found himself a win here. Uh, in the big blocks in heat number one, Beavers in the two, Anthony Monroe in the three, and Blake Bailey in the four spot. Uh, any surprises there, Smolden? No, and this uh, this was a great heat uh, as well. Um, these cars at this track is, uh, I would say, almost impossible to get around, but these guys made it look easy, and it was fun to watch. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, like I said, seeing these guys run out there was a great job. Congratulations again to Sellers bringing home the Heat one win there in the big blocks, and we do it again here with heat number two, and that's where Wyatt Walker found himself a heat race win, uh, and Chris Jones in the two spot, Stephen back there in the three, and Mr. White in the four. Um, big surprise there, looking at something here, and I see Chris Jones laying down a 12-8-8-0. Uh, ran identical quick time with Wyatt Walker there. You see that, Smolton? Pretty impressive for these guys. Very impressive. I'm surprised uh, both of those aren't highlighted up in yellow there on our end. But, uh, yeah, th these guys are flying out there. And Wyatt just happened to be able to get on that outside line starting in the uh, two spot. And was able to get up in front of Jones. But Jones was right on him that whole that whole race. Wyatt started to gap him there at the end, but, you know, it's part of it. Yeah, absolutely. And then we work ourselves into three heats. We had quite the turnout uh, with the big blocks. And uh, heat number three, there you go again. You find Coy. Picking up another heat win here. He got one over in the 360s, and he does it again here on the big blocks. Coy winning heat three. Cole Howard back there in the two spot. Mr. Big Nasty himself in the three. And Zach in the four spot. Any surprises there, Smolden? No, Coy was definitely racking up the heat races uh, Tuesday night. Uh, he's good at 
what he does out on the dirt and it's, it's a joy to have him out in the league with us and yeah he showed us his skill with the 12 eight one six it looks like so even faster than uh the heat or the second heat with the best lap so uh it was, it was a good race absolutely it was and then we get ourselves into the feature and that's where jamie kephart stood out from everybody else jamie kephart your race winner white walker in the two and cole howard rounds out your top three there um, I look at surprises, and uh, I see Chris Jones back there in the eighth spot. Maybe struggle just a little bit here, um, but also a couple guys that normally are up in the front also. Chris Beavers in the nine and Big Nasty in the ten. Some of those them three guys I just mentioned are normally your top five. Yeah, they certainly are. Uh, I know Big Nasty obviously didn't get much practice. He, he jumped into the race pretty late, so it's always tough to just jump out when you got – guys that have been running practice laps for 20 minutes and trying to get right back up into uh, speed. But um, I'm not going to lie, this this race here was probably one of the best races I've sat in the broadcast booth and watched. These guys at some points were three wide, four wide, no no major slide jobs, but just holding their own line. And, and these guys were searching for fast speed. I mean, it was unbelievable. It was, it was a hell of a race to watch. Uh, I could only imagine what it had been like being in a car and uh, being out there racing with these guys because it was it was awesome to watch. Yeah, it definitely was, and we take a look at the quick time there in that race, and that's going to go to Chris Beaver setting the time at a 12.90. So uh, Chris, Beaver's in, Chris Beaver's finishing in the nine spot with the race quick time, and we're going to move over to these incident points. And Smolden, once again, nobody reached 10 incident points. The highest that we had was eight, and that was from Blake Bailey. Um, surprise there or you know were these guys just cleaning it up a little bit i think to be honest they're cleaning it up i think uh obviously our new uh our new role of the stud and dud uh we're, we're hearing a lot of a lot of talk in the in the pits that uh they don't want to be the dud so these guys are showing up with their a game and and they're trying the best to stay off of one another and um absolutely shocking at lima um but hey Congratulations, guys! You're definitely cleaning it up, and we we enjoy it watching it. And I'm I'm sure being in the car, it's that much better when you're not getting wrecked. Yeah, it is, and absolutely a big shout out to Jamie Kephart again, winning that big blocks and uh, another little treat there for Jamie, the only guy in this race that had zero incident points. So uh, big shout out to you, not only winning the race, qualifying up front, zero incident points. Jamie Kephart dominated the big blocks there. Now we will. Uh, head on over to what we have next on the board here is we run the Dirt Pro Late Models. Those were also at Lima, and uh, we're going to start off with, uh, we did not have any heat races here. We went into qualifying, and your number one qualifier out there was Cole Howard, Jamie Kephart in the two, and three was Chris Beavers. Any surprises with these guys rounding out these uh, 12 drivers here? I think maybe the only shock would be Cole. I mean, he's getting better, but... Uh, dirt's not necessarily his his go-to, but uh, he is getting better, obviously. But, yeah, no, the rest of those guys up top there, you got Kev Hart, Beavers, Coy up there again, Derek, Jess. I mean, all those guys, we expect those guys to be in the top, you know, a couple, you know, few cars starting up front. Yeah, and notable for me is I see Jones back here in the 10 spot, normally a top five guy up here. So maybe just a Lima Land not really in Jones's favor so far through three races. Uh here uh, in the dirt this week. So we'll head right over to the race. And uh, once again, we find ourselves with Coy sitting on top here at the end of the night, winning it in the pro late models. Jamie Kephart in the two, Jess Gordon in that three spot. And uh, seeing anything out of the ordinary here for your uh, your uh, 14 drivers there? Yeah, I think maybe Chris Jones being in the 10, um, obviously didn't qualify great. So trying to get up through the field, um, there's not a lot of passing room on this track with uh, with these kind of cars. So, uh, they're just big and they take up so much track room. So it's always tough to uh, get around. That'd probably be the most shocking. But everybody else up top, Coy winning it. You got Jamie in the two spot and Jess Gordon in the three spot. I mean, it makes perfect sense to me. So yeah, absolutely. And it goes back. I felt like it maybe it was uh, it was the three sixties or it was the big blocks where big nasty Jones and Beavers finding themselves. Just finishing one or ahead of the other there, so they got their own little alliance going there in the back of the pack. And uh, looking at the fast time, the fast time was set by Blake Bailey, 12.554, setting that time in lap 10. So uh, the kid was definitely on a rail. 
And uh, we're going to look over here at these incident points, and this is where we find 10 incident points. The first time we've seen it uh, through the for the first two races here, and uh, it's brought to us by uh, Mr. White here, uh, getting 10. Other than that, Smolden, it was pretty clean. Yeah, no, we had another great race. I mean, two, the top four drivers had zero incident points, like you said, and uh, Cole only went with the two. And then, uh, yeah, Brennan just had a bad night, obviously. Uh, he got caught up in a couple different incidents mainly on his own but uh yeah it, it was a it was a rough uh it was a rough go for him but yeah overall these guys are still running good yeah absolutely fantastic job with those guys and i want to give a shout out to your top four drivers and coy jamie gordon and wyatt walker all those guys finish it with zero incident points so it can be done and Derek Sellers also with the goose egg. So great run by those guys. Uh, Coy bringing home the win there in the pro late models. And wow, we're going to head over to everybody's favorite class on dirt. And that is the dirt street stocks. These boys did not disappoint. And they came out and they came out in a hurry. We had 13 drivers show up for the dirt. And this is where Jamie Kephart qualified number one. Jess Gordon in the two and Derek Sellers in the three. Any surprises with this qualifying order there, Smolden? Absolutely not. No, it's exactly, I mean, it's getting easier and easier each week to pick, but um, you're seeing some guys that uh, up front that are staying up front. I think the only real shocker on my end would be Coy because he qualified or he practiced all, all night with, uh, you know, even with a couple heat races. So uh, missed the ball in qualifying here, but it happens. It's not hard to do. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Coy, definitely my surprise to uh, seeing him qualify 10 after a dominating performance uh, in the three races prior to this one. So big shout out to Jamie Kephart taking that number one spot. And we get right into the race. And this is where Jess Gordon just showed up out of nowhere and said, hey, I'm going to dethrone Kephart. And that's what he did. J Jess Gordon out here winning the race. Blake Bailey in the two and Coy in the top three. Um, great racing overall. It was pretty fun to watch. They were very competitive out there. Uh, any surprises you see in the race results there for the street stocks? I think the biggest one that stands out is kept Art not being on the top of the box, right? Uh, fourth place finish. He, I know he was very disappointed in himself. He had the fastest lap time out there. Um, he got shuffled, I believe, there real late with the, with the caution and uh, just couldn't get back up. But the rest of these guys, they were they were hauling the mail out there. They were they were quick. It was another real good race. I mean, to be completely honest, Tuesday night was a fun night uh, up in the broadcast booth. Absolutely was, and also agree with you. You know, not seeing Jamie Kephart at least winning it, not seeing him in the top three, is it a, a change of guard maybe? And I know it's one race, Smolden, but I'm just saying. I mean, are these guys maybe getting to, to get up there to get up to speed with Jamie Kephart to try to give him some run for his money in these dirt street stocks, or is it just a was it just a bad night for Jamie? I'm gonna go with it was an absolute just bad night for Jamie. I don't think any of these guys stand a chance in a uh, dirt street stock keeping up with Jamie. This boy knows how to run around these around these tracks, especially in these cars. So it was a fluke night. It happens. Uh, you know, nobody's perfect. So. Um, you know, fourth place still, even with all the other fast guys around him, you know, so he'll take it. It hurts, but I guarantee next week he's going to be looking for some blood after this, uh, after this poor performance here. So absolutely. And some of the guys I look at here and I see him and Chris Beavers finishing in the 13th spot, not where he wants to go. I believe he passed out at the wheel. Was that Beavers uh, late in this race, right? I guess he had a wheel incident, Smolden. Yeah, that's what I hear. Um, it, you know, it, it happens with. Anybody that knows what, how many electronics are involved while trying to do high racing, it's uh, it's a shocker that it doesn't happen more often. So uh, it's unfortunate. I don't think he wrapped up anybody with his own accident himself. But uh, yeah, I mean, you take a 13, you take a 13, and it is what it is, and you move on to the next week. Absolutely. And now we take a look at the incident points here, and nobody reached 10 in this category. The most we had was eight, and that was from Derek Sellers. That was from Wyatt Walker, and that was also from Chris Jones. So those three guys able to rack up eight incident points each. And a couple guys with two incident points, one being Jess Gordon picking up two, uh, Jamie Kephart two, and uh, Michael Brophy out there with two incident points. And, uh, you know, getting two incident points in dirt street stocks, that's not bad, man. These things are beating and banging. You're up on the wall. You're up on other drivers, Smolton. So 
You know, to not see anybody with double digits is very impressive this week. Overall, yeah, it was absolutely incredible how these guys were getting these big cars around this track, right, and were able to actually make it work. Uh, obviously, Jess and Jamie, they know how to, how to get these cars around any track, let alone uh, Lima. So it was good to see them with only two. I'm not exactly sure how Brophy was able to be three laps down and only have two incident points. So I'm not exactly sure what happened to his race there, but that's pretty good. Normally when you're a few laps down, it's because you crashed or someone hit you or, you know, whatever. But to go three down and only have two incident points, good for him. And he's still learning too. So good shout out to uh, Brophy there. I mean, it's an unfortunate finish, 10th place finish, three laps down. But, hey, you got to improve one week at a time, right? And you got to show him, he qualified 13, he finished 10th, he moved up three spots. So uh, maybe uh, slow and patient might be the key here for some of these guys in dirt street stocks, Mullen. All right. It's not Jamie's uh, pace, but yeah, someone's got to, you know, you got to <laughs> learn eventually. Yeah, absolutely. So the dirt was tons of fun. We had an awesome time in the dirt at Lima Land. And then things started getting serious as we make our way to the Bull Metal SK Series. And those guys were racing over at North Wilkesboro. Uh, definitely a fun track, and uh, man, it was it was a cold one. 68 degrees out there, clear skies, and it definitely felt cold, but these guys were heating it up. Uh, Peyton out there got into an early accident. He was your heat race winner. Got Ended up getting DQ'd late for an incident that occurred. Uh, sliding Jamie Kephart into the heat one winner spot there in the SKs. Uh, Rick Kelly in the two, James in the three, four going to Cole Howard, and Jordan uh, rounding out your uh, top five there as Peyton, like I said, did get disqualified. Peyton no longer in the league after an accident uh, occurred in the feature. So, uh, yeah, Smolden, anything in that one standing out to you? Um, incident points, obviously, in a heat race, you normally don't see them at a 12. So, a um, little, little odd there. Um, it's unfortunate for him. Uh, tempers flared, it sounds like, in the uh, feature. But, hey, racing's racing, but you just got to learn how to be patient. And tempers did flare, and you've seen it there. Like you said, we normally don't talk about heat race and incident points, but we're going to call them out as we see them. And Peyton with 12, and Rick Kelly for Chaos Motorsports with 12 incident points and a six-lap heat race. Something we don't like seeing, but it's going to happen, so that's the way it goes. As we move into heat number two, where Valentine finds himself a win there. Brophy in the two spot, good for him, and Brad Carpenter in the three spot, Adam Hur in the four, Derek Sellers in the five, and Chris Beaver is normally known to race dirt in the sixth spot. Any surprises there? Uh, no, I don't think so. Eli, obviously, he knows what he's doing in these cars, so it's a good heat win for him. And Brophy, though, I do like it, though. I like seeing him. He's starting to creep up in certain races, and it, it's good for him. I like to see it. Absolutely. Brophy putting in that time and the work throughout the week, laying down a lot of laps, and you can see the progress. Uh, coming along here for him as we get into the feature here. Uh, this is where Billy Van Meter took the race win. Jamie Kephart in the two and Cole Howard rounds out your top three here. Uh, some not bad. Uh, you know, those top three very quick. That's what you normally see. So you got a Chaos Motorsports winning it and a couple Choice Inc. Esports guys uh, two and three. Any surprises here with these last uh, these other 12 drivers here? No, I don't think so too much. Um... Nothing really stands out to me here. Maybe Brad Carpenter being down as low as he was, but um, you got some real fast guys up front there. So no, I think I think this race went exactly how we could have probably drawn it up. Yeah, Brad Carpenter definitely a surprise to me also, and Valentine also. Seeing them two guys, six and seven, you normally see them, you know, two, three, maybe one, two. So when I see guys with those kind of names and the credentials, not even in the top five, you know, to me it's, Maybe something was going on with them that night. Maybe something in the car. So other than that, uh, I don't see too much myself. And uh, we did get a guy to reach 10 incident points in the asphalt here, and that's going to be Adam Herr. But that's the most we had, 10. So not bad. Guys are cleaning it up. And uh, we had a few guys with zero incident points, one being your race winner, Billy Van Meter. Jamie Kephart also with zero. And James down there with zero also. Uh, guys are cleaning it up, Smolden. It's fun to watch. It's, uh, you know, the first couple weeks were a little rough. It's always tough when you get some new guys in the league and running cars that they're probably not used to running. It's always a struggle. But, um, yeah, no, overall, everyone's cleaning up in a real good act. We appreciate it. Very good. So big shout out to Billy Van Meter and those boys for taking the SK Modifieds at North Wilkes-Barre race win. 
And then we go get in the big boys. The Choice Inc. Modified Tour didn't disappoint either. These guys were racing in Phoenix, and it was actually a pretty cool night. 88 degrees in Phoenix, so not too hot uh, for those guys. But, man, let me tell you, we had some awesome, awesome racing here. And we qualified, and we didn't have any heat races with it being such a gigantic track. And Joshua Divers for Chaos Motorsports coming on top. Uh, laying down a burner is what they would call it, 27.962, the only guy to get into the 27 Smolden. Yeah, no, he, uh, I actually, I actually went out on the track myself for this race. I normally don't go out there, but uh, my uh, team owner told me that I had to, so <laughs> I went out there. Uh, you always got to listen to team owners, right? So I went out there just to see how this track would be. I like the bigger tracks, you know. The smaller tracks just aren't my forte, so I went out there, and uh, I have no idea how divers and some of these guys were putting down those laps. I mean, I, I feel like I was going fast, and I felt like if I got into the throttle any more than what I was doing, I was going to just snap loose, and uh, I was slow as hell compared to these guys. I mean, they were just hauling the mail around this track. It, it was fun out there, but I, I remember why I don't show up out there every week, that's for sure. Absolutely. So Joshua Divers taking that one spot, the two going to Valentine, and the three uh, going to Sellers there in qualifying order. Some of the guys that stood out to me um, that could have done better, in my opinion, was Billy Van Meter qualifying in the 11 spot and Nick back here uh, in the 14 spot. Not sure exactly what happened with his qualifying, but definitely a huge surprise small to see him in the 14. Yeah, it's a couple weeks in a row now, so I'm not sure if that's his strategy or, or what he's got going on there. Um, I'm not sure if he just stays away from qualifying. I mean, a 40-second lap here. I don't know if he was going in reverse or, or what he was doing, but uh, either way, yeah, shocker to see him all the way down there in the 14th spot. We got even Billy down there. Uh, qualifying was tough. It was That track layout is, is very odd. I, I, I can't even explain it, to be honest with you. <laughs> Absolutely. Definitely a crazy track. And then we get into the feature and things get even crazier. So your 14th qualifier who ran a 42nd lap in qualifying comes out to win it. Nick able to bring home the win here going 14 to first. And then you got Cole Howard in the two Derek Sellers in the three spot. Anything about this race here stood out to you, Smolden? You know, I would normally say the guy that's, qualified 14th and wins the race stands out but we all know nick is a phenomenal driver we enjoy him in the league uh he's helping guys out it, it's fun to watch a guy with that much talent come around and willing to help other guys learn how to become faster so normally i would say nick um but we expect that out of him i guess now uh He's just that good, and he's a clean ass driver too, right? Like he does. I don't. He doesn't ever get into anybody. I mean, he started 14th with. He was behind me, and I have no idea what I'm doing out there. And he drove around me. He was patient with me, made sure that I was out of the way when he made a pass, and and call it good, right? So, um, I think the the biggest shocker out there would probably be Billy, uh, finishing in the eighth spot. I think that's probably the the biggest one that stands out to me, at least. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I don't disagree with you there. And, and the one that stands out to me the most is your number one qualifier. It seems like they flip-flop to me. So your number one qualifier finishes 13. Your 14th qualifier finishes first, Molden. That is just an un incredible flip-flop there. Most definitely. Uh, there was obviously some some incidents involved, um, why they finished there. It was unfortunate. They got wrapped up. Um, and then they got a little little funky there after the actual first wreck. Uh, they decided to retaliate after the fact, and that will always get you booted every single time. Yeah, absolutely. And then we take a look at some of these incident points here, and uh, they getting a little higher here, and uh, we're going to call them out as we see them here. We got three guys with 16 incident points, and it's going to start off with the third-place driver, Derek Sellers, able to collect 16 incident points, still finishing third. And then you had Rick Kelly, also with 16 incident points, and believe it, it was Adam Herr with another 16 incident points. So it's a couple of these guys were beating and banging out here, Smolden. A little rougher than we like to see? Yeah, uh, most definitely. Um, it was one of those kind of races where you had to kind of bump a little bit to get some room. I mean, there were some real fast guys, but at the same time, 16's up there. I mean, we're not playing football, fellas. We are racing cars. So, uh, 
you know, lowest score in incident points usually wins, not uh, the opposite. Yeah, absolutely. And looking at some of these guys, the lowest we had a few guys, the lowest we had was four. And uh, that I'm going to give that to Cole Howard. He finished in second, got four incident points. Uh, Jay Bones able to finish in that five spot. Big move for Jay Bones. Good to see him finishing in the top five also with only four incident points. So, uh, yeah, anytime Jay Bones is not up in the air flying and is modified, he's he's normally up there uh, competing for top fives for sure, Smolder. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm just glad I was able to finish in front of him. That's all that matters. Yeah, that's right. Smolden finishing in the <laughs> Smolden, <laughs> Smolden finishing in the four spot. So yeah, big big win, big win there for Nick Cole and uh, Derek Sellers rounding out your top three there in the Choice Inc. Modified Tour at Phoenix, and then we get ready for the Chaos Pro Late Models. These are the Monte Carlo SS bodies, and we were at South Boston, and it felt like South Boston maybe around March. It was 72 degrees, mostly cloudy. And uh, the wind was picking up there, but these guys, they had the they had the heat races, and they didn't disappoint. And let me tell you, heat one, heat race one, going over to Jordan, uh, Adam Hur in the two spot, Rick Kelly in the three, Monroe in the four, and Howard, that uh, being Cole Howard in the five spot. There, any surprises in that first heat there in the uh, Pro Late Models? Uh, these cars at South Boston are absolutely ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> Jordan with a 15.909 like that, that, that's one heck of a lap for sure, especially in the heat race, I guess. Uh, difficult, very difficult to get these cars around there. And, and trying to link more than just one lap at a time together and be quick, is, is it, it's a tall task, that's for sure. Yeah, very tall task. And big shout out again to Jordan being able to pick up a couple of heat race wins the last couple of weeks. So he's uh, getting his program together over there. And we move into... Heat number two, and this is uh, won by Billy Van Meter. Jay Bones uh, finishing in the two spot. Derek Sellers in the three, and yourself finding yourself in the four spot. Any surprises in this heat? Uh, nope. I ended up right where I deserve to be because I have no idea what I'm doing out there. Um, and then, obviously, I, w- I, don't know if, I don't know if you were making sure that I was in a super stacked heat, so I stood no chance of winning. I'm not sure exactly what happened here, but... Uh, all three of these guys here had a faster lap than the fastest guy in heat one. And sure, I'm out there with them, of course, right? So, yeah. uh, no, Billy coming out with a heater. Jay out there, though, he he had a good night out uh, out here at South Boston. So, until the end, it was a little a little struggle. But it was uh, it was fun to be out there with the boys. And when, it, when you have no idea what you're doing out on the track and you're racing with these guys, it makes it that much more fun for me. So, and they're always giving me shit, obviously, so. Absolutely, and the the notable that stood out to me is seeing that the Choice Inc. esports program is coming along here as they were able to lay down the quickest time in that heat race. Uh, there's two other uh, Chaos Motorsports drivers in there, and Jay Bones able to lay down the quickest time in that heat race, a 15.674. So shows you that program is moving in the right direction, Smolden. We're trying. We are trying. Uh, Chaos knows what they're doing on these kind of cars, but, uh, you know, we like the little friendly competition, and it, it always, you know, helps out. It makes it fun. The racing's fun now. All right, here we go. We get right into the feature here, and this is where Billy Van Meter ended up winning it here. Cole Howard in the two, and Anthony Monroe able to find himself in the top three here. Um, how are you feeling about these other uh, seven drivers here? They finished where you thought they should have uh, finished? Yeah, I think top three, like you said, probably deserve to be there. It's a good race on Anthony Monroe for sure. Uh, He's learning. We're we're learning as a league uh, where he's more comfortable in. Um, Adams up there. Derek probably a little lower than I thought he would be. Um, Jordan struggled a little bit, but he was able to obviously finish on the lead lap. So congratulations on that. And uh, yeah, I mean the rest of the guys probably deserved where they deserve to be. I guess. Yeah, absolutely. And we look at it here from. Uh... The prospect of, you know, we, we look at it, the, the big surprise for me is once again seeing the dominance that was happening early in qualifying with the Choice Inc. guys, Chris Jones, Jay, and yourself. You guys all qualified pretty well there. And uh, to finish 7th, 8th, and ninth or 10th, I'm sorry, a uh, little bit of a disappointment there. But, you know, these guys will get it turned around, and maybe South Boston just wasn't in the cards for them because you normally don't see – uh, the Choice Inc. esports guys go a lap down and multiple drivers. You know what I mean, Smolder? Absolutely. No, it was a uh, myself speaking just on my own behalf. 
I shouldn't have even joined the race. I should have been up in the booth, to be completely honest. But I wanted to dabble with a little bit of racing last night. So uh, I jumped on, and, uh, yeah, I struggled. So uh, once I spun it, I sent her to the pits, and I told the crew, hey, we are packing up and uh, heading home. So uh, definitely a struggle out of Jonesy and Jay. Um, Jay was running really good there, too, and he just had a mishap, and unfortunately, uh, yeah, finished eighth, so. Yep, it happens like that sometimes. And now we go over and look at these incident points for this feature here. And let me tell you, it was uh, one man stood out to me, and he had the most. That was 22 incident points from Derek Sellers. Finishing fifth, but 22 incident points. That's a lot of X's out there, Smolden. Certainly was. Uh, he peaked the meter, and I'm almost positive. Well, I, I can, oh, yeah, I can guarantee that was the highest of the week. So. Uh, I don't know if he was just trying to run shit over and hit stuff like a demolition derby or a figure eight, but uh, yeah, not what we're trying to do out there. Yeah, absolutely. But 22. still finishing ahead of me though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, twenty-two, <laughs> definitely a lot. And he's uh, and his teammate followed up right behind him, Rick Kelly, with eighteen incident points. So Rick Kelly, a little bit on the struggle train here this week on the asphalt. Uh, eighteen for him, twenty-two for Sellers. That's going to lead everybody uh, by a landslide here. And uh, we got to give it credit where credit's due here. The goose egg, zero incident points going to Billy Van Meter as he wins the race, lays down the best time of the race at a 15.59. And, uh, you know, he, he led 35 laps, and he got zero incident points. So a dominating performance for uh, Billy Van Meter and the boys at Chaos Motorsport. All right. Absolutely dominated. Absolutely dominated. Good win, Billy. Uh, I don't know how you get around that with zero incident points and lead 35 laps. It, it blows my mind. I, I'm not even sure how that's possible. <laughs> Absolutely. And then, like I said, it was a shorter week this week, and now we're already on to Thursday night racing action. And uh, let me tell you, it was very exciting. The iRacing Super Speedway, 80 degrees, man, the 30-story banking track. It was crazy. So we can jump right into qualifying here, and uh, we'll just break down our drivers that we had out there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Derek Sellers able to put down that number one qualifier out there um, kind of running solo and qualifying didn't have any teammates out there with them and uh, it was group qualifying for this mold and it made it fun to be able to get with your teammates kind of wrangle up some drafting and some bump drafting and uh, Derek Sellers out there putting that car to the number one spot Cole Howard in two Brandon Parks in the three spot Smolden, how'd you feel about the group qualifying and be able to get out there with your teammates and, and wander around the track and qualifying yeah, so on these bigger super speedways, especially this one here, uh, the group qualifying is where it's at. So it is boring as hell driving around this track by yourself. So I'm glad you set it up that way. Um, and not only that, but it allows you some extra time to work with teammates out there to just kind of get the feel of what everybody, you know, what you want to do and how you're going to make it work. Um, I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was uh, it was better than just doing a 30 minute practice and a you know two lap qualifying and then you're talking. It, it doesn't work out. So it's nice not only that, but you can work as a team and strategize, saying hey, let's drop back a little bit or let's move forward. It, it allowed you some wiggle room. So it was it was neat. It was fun. Yeah, absolutely. So Derek Seller is able to take number one qualifier, Cole in the two, Brandon Parks in the three. Uh, some notable guys that we can't really call out because, like I said, it was it. Some guys jumped in late. Some guys couldn't. Um, so unfortunate for those guys, but your top three did a great job. And then we jump right into the feature here where Jamie Kephart able to bring home that win, Cole Howard in a two, and Smolden uh, rounding out your top three there. And, uh, man, you guys were racing hard. Smolden, you were in this race, and you were Kephart were bumper to bumper. You had some great footage of that. And uh, coming to the end of this race here, Kephart only needed to lead one lap, and it was the last lap, and he was able to squeeze by. Cole Howard to finish it 0. 0.042 ahead of Cole. What a race that was, Smolden. Yeah, no, it was a it was a real fun finish as well, right? Having all three of us up there, it was uh, it's good to get out on the track with these boys, and uh, yeah, it was a heck of a race. There, there were some crazy incidents to start the race. Uh, we had a couple cars getting into each other, kind of shuffled me. Thankfully, there was no damage on this race, or that would have probably shuffled me to the back, and who knows what would happened. But I was able to. Uh, recover from that and uh, yeah it was a good race oh, yeah absolutely it was a great race and like i said big shout out to the choice inc esports team finishing one two and three out there like i said the program did great this week um, a lot of great things to come from that program uh, as we've seen 
uh, throughout the races this week. Um, any notables in this race here? Uh, did you feel uh, any anything in the back here with some of these drivers, or was it just the iRacing Super Speedway, luck of the draw type of deal here, Smolman? Uh, you got to go Super Speedway race, and I don't think anybody could have won this. I mean, a bot could have probably won this race if it would have worked out for him in the in the right direction. I mean, a couple of the guys finishing a couple laps down. Brandon Parks was a real fast runner. Uh, unfortunately, on one of the restarts we had late in the race, uh, got ran over and ended up, you know, a couple laps down, it looks like. But, um, to be honest, though, that, that's super speedway racing. It, it, I don't even think it's a coin flip. I mean, there's so many chances against you to not win versus winning. Um, it's just luck of the draw to just win or finish the race, let alone win it. So it's hard to pick up. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely hard to pick somebody out there tonight. And like I said, to me, uh, you know, it's unfortunate. I see these numbers here, and I always go to your number one qualifier, and I always like to see where they finish. Number one qualifier here was Derek Sellers. Unfortunate, got a couple accidents and uh, bringing it home into 28. So for me, that's a little bit of an upset. Uh, not on his part of driving. It's just the luck of the draw, the iRacing Super Speedway. To go qualify one, you're sitting on top of the world. And then by the end of the race, you're back in the back, packing it up with Joe Dirt and all them boys. So unfortunate for Sellers. But overall, I think it was a great race, Smolin. Yeah, no, it was fun. And like you said, it's definitely unfortunate for Sellers. Uh, he got involved in a pretty early accident with, I believe it was Adam. That's the one that I got involved in with uh, early and was able to recover from, but they uh, obviously weren't as lucky as I was tonight. So, but overall great race. It was fun. Can't wait to do it again. Absolutely. And then we're going to break down some of the races here. That's going to happen next week before we get into the duds and dud segment of the show here. Uh, next week we'll be back in action. That's going to be February 28th. The asphalt street stocks, We'll be over at Stafford Motor Speedway. That should be a good one. Uh, followed up right behind that is going to be the trucks, the 203 Truck Series at Texas. Smolden, the trucks in Texas, I feel like that's going to be a good combination. I feel like it's going to be a good one. Uh, we put it on the schedule at a perfect time, so looking forward to it. And uh, Yeah, we missed it this past week, so uh, everyone's looking forward to getting back in those trucks, and Texas is always a good track to run around. Absolutely, and then we're going to go right into the dirt. That's going to be on March 1st, so welcome March in with a slam dunk. Williams Grove, I know it's not a fan favorite. Not a lot of guys would love Williams Grove, but that's where all the dirt action is going to be this week. Holden, how do you feel about Williams Grove, knowing you're a dirt guy? Uh, to be completely honest, it's a great track as long as it gets slicked. Um, if it's a tacky track, it's a little boring. It gets one line, but once it burns off a little bit, you can start moving around a little bit. Three and four, it's kind of a one line, hard to throw a slider, but one and two, you're coming into it with so much speed and it's a wide sweeper. You really can get, you can get some bite off of it and go down the back stretch, and that's where all the passing happens. Absolutely. And then we head over to the Bull Metal SK series. Those guys are going to be over at Hickory Motor Speedway on March 2nd. Uh, that's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so a little earlier start there uh, for Hickory SKs. And then right after that, the Choice Inc. Modified. And Smolden, they're going to your favorite track, the Watkins Glen International. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's my favorite track. I'd just say maybe I got lucky, but I don't even know how those guys are going to get those uh, tours around that track. Uh, it's uh, that big old air filter thing right in front of the view and trying to turn right and turn left and do all the other shit that you're not supposed to be doing in the SK or in the tour. Uh, I might be in the booth with you for that one. Not going to lie. I do like Watkins, but it's only because I got lucky this past year. But uh, I doubt I'll be out there for that one. So can't wait for it, though. Yeah, and then we're going to finish the night on March 2nd. Uh, that Wednesday night is going to be the Chaos Pro Late Model Monte Carlo SSs, and they're going to be at Bristol Motor Speedway. Always a pleasure to race at Bristol. I love the tight uh, feel of the short track racing action there. And then March 3rd, we're going to Homestead, Miami, and the Cup Cars. That's going to be a fun one. Uh, I do love me some Homesteads. So, Smolden, how do you feel about next week overall, the races that you're seeing, man? Uh, it should be a good one, right? I believe it's going to be a great week again. I mean, we have some some tracks that are fitting, and then that one tour mod, that the tour race is different, so it should be fun to watch. And to be honest, I can't wait to finish the week off in Miami. I'm going to bring the old uh, G-string 
and uh, get these butt cheeks nice and tanned up out on the beach and looking for the hot weather. Let's go. All right, that's what I'm talking about. So now here we go. We're getting to the favorite part of the show. Everybody loves it. We're going to pick the stud, and we're going to pick the dud from this week's racing action. And, uh, well, I'll get the party started off this week. I'm going to be picking a dud, and my dud this week is going to be Rick Kelly. Rick Kelly this week got a ton of incident points. So Rick Kelly this week is my dud. Smolden, who are you taking as your stud? My stud this week is going to go to Jamie Kephart. He was absolutely dominant couple bad finishes in the dirt races but then backed it up with some pavement races right after that uh he won the the heat one and sks finished all right and then he, he finished the week off right with a uh, with a win so it's it's easier to pick the stud than it is the dud at times for sure uh um but there was a couple options but i had to go with kephart there you go jamie kephart being the stud rick kelly being the dud Smolden, it was a pleasure. It's been an awesome night and a uh, great week of racing with you. I'm glad to have you in the booth when I do got you and uh, appreciate you being here. And uh, man, until next week, Smolden. Until next week, sir. Appreciate you like always. And uh, yeah, it's a pleasure being up in the booth with you. And on to next week. Let's do it. Remember, guys, you do not want to be the dud. We're out. We'll see you next week, Smolden. Great job. I'll see you guys. Have a good one. See y'all.